Welcome in everyone, my name is Tom J Sherlock and in this video it's going to be a new series in which I share a couple of tips that I picked up along the way in Rainbow Six Siege. By no means shape or form am I the best or actually very good player at Siege and I should probably implement some of these tips myself but we're going to be bringing to you today five top tips that you can use to improve your skill and hopefully your KD and get more of that elo in Rainbow Six Siege. So let's crack on with it. First of all, you're going to want to figure out your role in the game. So we can split this into attack versus defense, and then we can split that into a further three separations as well. So when you're on attack, there are three options you can go with, really. It's either hard support, so you would be playing the likes of Thermite, you're playing the likes of Ace, Thatcher, basically people who are going to be opening walls and getting rid of utility. So your main operators you're looking at are either hard breaches or people with hard gadgets or people with EMPs. Your second option can be playing as entry and that is you're the person who's getting droned in, you're the person looking to pick up those entry frags for your team. Usually you would see people playing Nook, Ayana, Ash, Zofia, all players who are quick and have fantastic guns to be able to drill down those opponents you come up against. Your final role is sort of a flex or soft support and you're going to be players such as Docker B. Um, you could also be Nomad. So sort of kind of flank watchers. You're also going to help your entries, backing them up, refragging your entries when they die as well. Then we switch over to the defense. And once again, it's got similar roles. You can start off with the Roma role. The Roma role, you sort of have players such as Solis. You have your Vigil, maybe not as much. Your Oryx, and these are the players who are sort of off-site, looking to pick up those entry players, get a couple clip, get a couple picks before you look to rotate back to site as well. Or you might be your sort of hard support turtle approach. And those are players like Mute, Bandit, Mirror. You're going to stay on site, your task with locking down that site and ensuring that no quick rushes come in and catch your team off guard. The final role is similar to the attack. And that's going to be flex. You're your player who sort of backs up your roamers. Um, you sort of have your, your Jaeger, your Frost. You can sort of play off site a little bit. But th if things get a little bit dicey, you're going to want to make your way back to site. So my first tip is identify which role fits you best. But also which role fits best with your team. If you're usually playing entry, but you see your other teammates play entry, especially if you're solo queuing, maybe go for a hard support role in which you can back up your teammates as well. Tip number two. I am showing you right here the only time that it is really acceptable to be sprinting in Rainbow Six Siege. As soon as you see yourself get into the danger zone or somewhere dangerous, you want to stop sprinting. If you stop sprinting, you'll have your crosshair up constantly and you'll be able to pick off your enemies with ease. As you can see here, if we get caught sprinting, there, as you have it, you're not ADSing, you're not going to capture your enemies. If you push around the map, ADS, you're not only going to be able to pick off enemies easier, whereas look, if we sprint around this corner, you're not ADSing, you're not going to be able to pick up your enemies. Whereas if you go around the corner, not sprinting slowly, you can pick up your enemies with ease. Sprinting, not good. Going slowly, pre-aiming your corner with your crosshair at a good height is only going to prove absolutely beneficial for you, as you can see there. So that is tip number two in Rainbow Six Siege. Do not get caught sprinting, ladies and gents. The only tip number three. And this is a big one, and one which probably might tickle a few people's egos. And speaking of egos, what it is, is tip number three is to drop your ego. As you can see here, I've had a range of ranks, gold, plat, plat, diamond, emerald, but normally I have a negative KD. Um, and I'm fully aware that as a 30-year-old man who's dog shit at video games, I don't really have much of an ego, but I do play with a lot of players who probably do have a little bit of an ego. And if there's one tip I can give you, it is drop your ego. Be willing to switch around your roles, maybe play support. You don't always have to be that high KD entry player. It's a siege, siege is a team game at the end of the day. So it's important to work well as a team together. So drop the ego and you'll be winning the ELO. That's my top tip and tip number three.
Tip number four in this Rainbow Six Siege tips and tricks video is to use verticality. Verticality in Rainbow Six Siege is huge. As you can see here, the majority of the falls are breakable. And in situations like this, if you get a sneaky drone hidden away and you find out where this player is, you can ping him, use the use of the yellow pings, go below, cook an aid, time the nade to be cooked perfectly, release, and then you get a freebie kill like that. Verticality can be used in a large range of ways as well. Um, you can use it to floor bang players with nades. You can use it to open up angles down onto site to deny wall denial, get rid of bandit charges, cave claws as well. There is such a huge range of ways that you can use verticality in Rainbow Six Siege to your advantage. So as we touched on earlier, verticality can not only be used to get yourself kills in Rainbow Six Siege, it can also be used to deal with utility that would stop you from entering into the site. As we see here, we can use the verticality to get rid of the clay core, which will enable us to also push in, open up this breach, and get into sight. Verticality is one of the biggest things you'll be seeing used in Rainbow Six Siege to your advantage. Whether um, so as you can see, not only have we opened up the vertical angle to get rid of the K-Claw, but if you find out that the player's down below, you can do a handy little trick like this, where you drop a grenade on the floor, sledge it, that grenade will fall through, and then it will pick up the kill onto the player as well. Which means you can not only get a kill, but it's not as dangerous because you're not opening up the angle, then shooting down, you're placing that grenade on the floor, sledging it and getting a nice freebie kill and using verticality to your advantage once more, which is why I think verticality is such a huge advantage in Rainbow Six Siege and something you need to make the most of. Tip number five is to use sound to your advantage. In Rainbow Six Siege, the smallest of differences can make the difference in between winning rounds and losing rounds. For example, if a player repels up a window or up to a window, that which the player is doing right now, without breaking the glass on the outside of the window, you cannot hear anything. But once he goes off repel and you shoot the window a couple of times to break the glass, now listen to when the player repels. So it is so, so much easier to hear this player simply by breaking the glass. You don't have to open up the window to give away the player's position. But if you do break the glass, you'll be able to hear that player repelling all the way up and gain an advantage on that player and finish them off nice and easily. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of Tom J. Sherlock's top five tips to help you improve in Rainbow Six Siege. If there's any tips that you have, drop them in the comments below and I can maybe put them into the next video as well. But have a lovely rest of your morning, evenings and afternoons and hopefully see you in the streams or in future YouTube videos or on my banging Twitter because we drop some absolute banger tweets on there and see you all soon. Farewell. Goodbye.